<laughs> Have you guys ever asked a woman to try and make like machine gun sounds? They cannot do it. I'm not fucking kidding. <laughs> they cannot do it. Why, why would I do that? It's incredibly funny. Like, try to ask them to say like, do, 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 or pow, pow. <laughs> Probably the microphones are exploding to our viewers. No fucking this is such All a... our female listeners, and we have so many uh, NBs and women listening and so on, uh, try to make machine gun sounds. I am like 98% <laughs> sure you cannot. I don't know what the fuck uh, that is about. This, this, this is very, uh, what's it called? Uh, like a playground, you know, like yeah. eight-year-old playground. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to show you're young at heart, Habib. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I walk around sometimes when I'm all alone in the house i like uh, do like special ops operations in my own apartment <laughs> I, I, i'm oh like God, clearing so clearing room by room and shit uh and sometimes <laughs> with real firearms obviously empty but it's it's uh, mm. uh the, the larper in my you soul is intense or if uh, some spiritual per- person would say in your previous life you were this or that speaking of which i cannot believe no. i never asked you this my mom i'm visiting my my lovely mother uh today and the last three days she's greeting everybody uh and i was like oh i'm gonna hang out with the guy she loves you guys a lot and she asked uh uh-huh. uh what are their star signs and i can't believe i never asked either <laughs> of you. what uh, the fuck are you uh bleep mine but i'm <laughs> oh he's i like that one my aunt is that one. I cannot say what it is because he is so secretive. You don't have to bleep mine. Uh, yes. Mine is going to be kind of obvious. Guess mine. Mm. Guess mine. I don't know any Taurus. of them. Uh, you're cancer. <laughs> that, yeah, you're cancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, 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 you're a Gemini. You do such Gemini I'm things. a Leo, so motherfucker. What Gemini? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm dating a Gemini. I don't fucking but, know this I'm, shit. I'm a Leo. Okay. I don't know this shit either. I'm just okay. pretending to get laid, yeah. bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my you're god. JT, you have no idea. You're what? I, I'm an I'm an Aries. I'm one of them. I'm a, I'm one of them goats. I, I think I think that's mm. what Aries is. I thought you were gonna make an Aryan <laughs> joke, but uh, no. oh, well. <laughs> oh man! I'm pretty no, sure I, the I, Germans I, would have thought I was Jewish with my with my curly hair. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, and those those beautiful, lustrous eyes. Mm, mm. Yes. But an Aries, uh, me as an expert on these things, is that Aries, you would be so convincing in manipulating them that you are an Aryan, that they would believe you. Like <laughs> mm. most uh, most uh, German Nazis such were thing. such oh cancers, God. and they were easily manipulated, especially <laughs> by such an intense sign, like an Aries. Uh-huh. Okay, huh. Jesus. <laughs> exactly That's sexist right. what yes. I just did there. Yeah. Kind of. Probably. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know I know some guys who are into that shit. It's oh. not, I don't think it's a woman only thing. I, but yeah, it is. I think it, there's a personality Absolutely. to it. Um, yeah. I know. I know a guy that's like as big as three wardrobes and runs like a multi-million <laughs> dollar company that's like fucking obsessed with this fucking shit. Like he's yeah. all the all the time, all the time. He brings it up all the time, and he's like, "Man, it's worked with me 100 percent of the time." And I'm like, "What did you huh. use it for?" And I'm like, "I need to decide between two potential business partners, and one is more compatible with me, and the other is not." But no, but he doesn't say with me. I apologize. He he has uh, the company when it was founded. He takes the date, so the company has a star sign. So he chooses. Oh, ba- but it seems oh, to have been goodness. working. But by the way, before liberal on the wall says, "Why are you hanging out with capitalists?" Mm. Uh, I don't know. You probably hang out with a pedophile. You don't know he's a pedophile, man. It's uh, I, I <laughs> no, my lord. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Who go fuck yourself? The guy's a great guy. I'm fairly certain. Uh, I'm fairly certain. I do not. But okay. Oh, you'll be surprised, baby. You are on this podcast, aren't oh, you? Lord. Mm. Oh, oh my god <laughs> I was like, hey, okay hey, hey. Anyways, i'm on a roll today baby <laughs> i was gonna say how about how about you tell us about your gambling and your yeah new, what ga- new gambling addiction what ga- <laughs> jesus you, you guys are such pathetic uh peasants <laughs> so lately i've gotten into uh no actually i have not spent a single dollar yet uh, because I can't win. Uh, I started. No, I want. I always wanted to collect something, right? As a kid, I collected mm. these Burago toys, these uh, metal uh, metal cars. Collected them in, in the box and everything. Even though I played around with them a bit, but uh, I was really into it. And as I'm getting older and older, uh, now hitting what uh, 56 years of age, I need to find something <laughs> which. Uh, uh, like a hobby that is outside of just my political ideology because I believe I will slowly start losing my mind. Uh, and I always just liked <laughs> beautiful stuff. 
but beautiful stuff that is in uh, at least in 3D form. I love paintings, I love music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but they've always been exceptionally passionate, but completely illiterate when it comes to statues. Why am I talking about this? I started yeah. bidding. I found this very good website where you can bid, <laughs> and they can send you stuff from all over the world, basically stuff from the 19th century, from the 18th, for the 17th. And obviously, there's like stuff for like fifty thousand dollars there, but there's absolutely acceptable stuff. And if you can find, you know, something really cool that nobody else found, you can bid on a very low amount and then you can get it and I've been bidding on like 10 items at this point and uh, for example <laughs> I'm bidding and it's like a beautiful uh, statue of like an eagle or some shit from like 18th century uh, 19th century Bonap uh, Napoleon Bonaparte era like whatever and it's super fucking cool and I'm super hyped and I'm, I can buy it for 250 bucks right and like one minute before it ends some guy comes in with $1,200 and he just buys it off and they did that mm. 10 times to me so uh, what I'm saying is bidding must be returned to the proletariat. The capitalists <laughs> took over that shit too. But it's not gambling. It's actually opposite of gambling. It's opposite of even shopping. Because even though you, you say, I am going to give this money, there's a chance that they're not going to take your money. So it's... Uh, uh, it's interesting. It's, it's surprisingly fun. And I want to set up a nice little connection or whatever. One day when I have my little office, thanks to all the Patreon money that we're getting, I want to make it super <laughs> LARPy, but not too LARPy with only Soviet stuff in it. I want to have like nice decent shit from... from uh, from you know all the different uh, eras of our beautiful, beautiful planet. You gotta Actually, set you up one of those bidding bots. Yeah. That's the only way you're gonna win. Probably, right? Probably, I was gonna say. But you do you, all right? If it gives you, it brings you <laughs> happiness. Why not? And as long as you're not like you know dropping your life savings or <laughs> no, shit. Yeah. <laughs> but what happens when you win the ten that you've bidded on? You're like, oh, you know, two hundred bucks here, you know, one fifty there, and then suddenly you've got oh, a ten thousand dollar bill came due. <laughs> Oh, no, and your family is like, what the fuck are you doing with these 20 gold eagles, motherfucker? <laughs> oh, no, look, I got the eagle statue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I have a, I have a, what's it called? A side story to just change your focus real quick from... <laughs> a beautiful <laughs> hobby. A great you, hobby. You, you, you Why are You got me on speed this, this episode. Um, but yeah, what was I going to say? Um, so, you know, my, uh, I, not recently, it's been months now, but I've moved to a new apartment fairly recently over the last few months. Um, and finally I've gone around to organizing this fucking place. I've had a bit of downtime to get it done. So that's what I'm getting done right now. And the fucking idiot that lived in this place before me has basically, I think he stuck the, the a fucking drill between his ass cheeks or something and just went up <laughs> to any wall he could and then just started like, like haphazard, like, you know, slant fucking uh, uh, drill holes. I don't know uh, what the fuck this dude was trying to do, <laughs> but every corner of this fucking house was drilled. Like paintings so, and shit? Um, was that his, do you think that was the idea? No, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck he had. They, they're too big to be for paintings, <laughs> but they're oh. like, it's not like, uh, it's not like bullet bearing, holes? Like, I don't no 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 no. There's the actual <laughs> drill, and he has the, the the fucking sheath for the for the for the, what's the glory it holes. The what the fuck is it called in English? The screw? No no the, the screw. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no no glory holes. Uh, that would at least make <laughs> some sense. Yeah at least right? fun yeah. And it, like dude, there's one wall where he has like eight fucking holes in uh, holes in what? these like uh, diagonal patterns. I, I don't know if this dude was like into the uh, uh, you know occult the or occult, something. Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, he was so, he was trying to get the liberals. He was trying to drill through. Like, I hear them. They're right here. That is why you hear them. <laughs> oh my god! More yeah, continuous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my god! Oh. But <laughs> turns out it's okay, not anyway, in your so mind. They're fucking... actually in the fucking walls, bro. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. He's looking. He's fucking drilling into the fucking granite and cement. I was gonna say, um, so I've been filling these fucking holes now, and finally they're all filled. But I need to get the paint for the wall. And this dude decided to pick this fucking like off, like light blue, uh, more gray. I don't know what, what kind of place to live in. So Jesus Christ! Kind of, <laughs> a white blue room I, I, with holes I, in it. That literally sounds like the asylum. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> basically yeah oh my god uh and uh yeah ba i've been trying to find the fucking appropriate color to go with this fucking wall but to remind you i am colorblind so maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not the right one listen i don't give me. a shit but i, I got I, listen uh, to uh, me uh. you know what would go really well in that room what a bunch of 18th century eagles <laughs> 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 Decades ago, a quote was carved into a marble wall in our headquarters. 
and ye shall know the truth, and it shall set you free. Or, as the rest of you know it, we shall know the truth, but not you, definitely not you, just us. Maybe we'll give you some crumbs 50 years after mm -hmm. an event <laughs> has transpired in a podcast or something, and you shall feel free. Welcome to another episode of The The Program, a meta episode, a podcast talking about another podcast, a civil war in this most white boy mm -hmm. of industries. Beef. We are <laughs> beefing. We are beefing with the CIA. <laughs> we are taking on a giant here. Such incredible sacrifices for our dear, dear listeners. We had mercy on each other in a similar way we did with the Masterclass episode, and we split the pain three ways and then had a three-way. Uh, no, uh, jokes aside, each of us <laughs> had a simple yet menacing task. Watch one of the three currently available episodes of the CAA's newest project, Killing... Ch no, 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 the other one, uh, The Langley Files, a <laughs> podcast, and a very scripted one uh, at that. So... The yeah. Langley Files. Who exactly is Langley? I always thought it was a person. Well, it's actually a town. The arch nemesis of Chattanooga, the core of anti-ball grabbing KGB <laughs> enemies of democracy. And I needn't, didn't know this. It hosts the CIA's headquarters called, I swear I did not invent this. Yeah. I... <laughs> it's kind of honest. It's kind of yeah. nice in an honest way, honestly. <laughs> it's named after the liberator of many a golf holes and many a golf country. I was very proud of oh that. Oh, my joke. God. <laughs> <laughs> George Bush Center for Intelligence. George Bush and intelligence in oh the same Lord. sentence. That's incredible. Yeah. The show's host. I don't know who this Katrina is, but we're going to find her. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the show's oh, host. Wait, hold on. Yeah, go on, go on. I was going to say, wait, uh, it, uh, it's likely in Virginia, right? Yes. Yeah, and, and Chattanooga is in Tennessee. Correct. All right, they're not that far apart. I thought it was like opposite sides of the country. Okay, well then, uh, the, the Great Patriotic That's War. That's our forward base, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, go on, go on. Uh, the show's hosts are D and Walter. Hakeem, I'm amazed you didn't feel the need to say D's nuts. Yeah. Like, <laughs> D's I literally nuts. didn't hear this. I was, I was expecting. There. I, I was going <laughs> to, because I wanted to say Langley D's nuts when you first began, but I thought about <laughs> so I was like, all right, you know what? <laughs> uh, you lost both of Sorry, your opportunities. Yeah. Uh, those holes are getting too much draft into your apartment. You can't think straight. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> so let's start with the first episode, uh, which I had the displeasure of having to listen through. Uh, the guest of the first episode is CIA director Bill Burns. Literally sounds like a fake name, like uh, John Smith. I wish he would do what his last name says. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Uh, what? Uh, so in this episode, about many questions, the first one uh, was asked, why did we start this podcast? To destroy some of the misconceptions people have about the Central Intelligentsia Agency. So what are these misconceptions about the CIA you might ask that we will address? Like, do you use heroin and coke to fund <laughs> right-wing terror groups? How many countries did you help overthrow? Why were you behind some of the most batshit insane torture programs against foreign as well as domestic citizens? And many, many more. No, uh, the biggest mm -hmm. uh, misconception is that people think we're uh, like James Bond. Uh, and, then the, and then Bill goes in to say, you know, it's not as glamorous as the films make it out to be. Uh, he reminds us he drives there are no one-liners when we kill my horses <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, he, he drives uh, listen to this he drives a 2013 subaru and can never get his remote to work mm. he hates speeding Good for you, man. He's constantly king. cold yeah. pouring by his daughter's <laughs> guys uh, look at me i'm so relatable to most podcast listeners r and i am also lazy like you motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> Bill, your your daughters are going to hate you when they grow up and learn a little bit about mm. the world. You will be remembered as a a criminal. I mean, yeah, no, that's that's actually just very true and that just I felt the honesty coming from the heart from JT. I yeah. was going to say that your daughters are going to be communists probably or your yeah. grandkids like at least. Jordan. Yeah, we'll see. Like Jordan Peterson's daughter <laughs> either got, either that or the or, or the uh, I was going to say either that or they'll die on the climate wars. I don't know what to tell you. But. <laughs> yeah. I'm already weaning her off water. She will be ready. She will be a warrior. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that, yes, it's probably, I mean, I don't know, the, the daughters are not uh, guilty of anything to me, for me to make fun of them, but I guess it no, will no. be a compliment. Uh, probably, I hope the same thing happens to you that happened to Jordan Peterson, which is uh, 
uh, your uh, <laughs> grandson was conceived by your daughter and a Stalinist drug dealer, I think. It was very <laughs> weird. Uh, okay. Oh, man. So then oh. we move on. He then goes on about how it's not just one super agent that solves everything. We employ thousands of people, and it's about teamwork and stuff. Like, note this is only the first of many more ultra, like, corporatized slogans he's throwing out yeah. there. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's kind of good yeah, to yeah. see that, you know, the world's most popular religion, blind belief in corporate slogans, has uh, made its <laughs> way into <laughs> the intelligence uh, world. Very intelligent. I, I, I like the, the term. It's like a cartoon. Tell. It's like, oh, there's not one guy. We work yeah, together. There's thousands, thousands of criminals <laughs> working in unison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, sorry, go on. This is not just the one person thing. We were literally interviewing a cartel boss, and he's like, oh, we've made great <laughs> strides in the last five, six years. And like the vice interviewer is like, we've di- well, diversified. Yeah, we've diversified. <laughs> we, have we, so many native, <laughs> we have so many natives been doing dr- uh, as drug mules. <laughs> oh my God. He then continues to brag about how they guessed that Russia would go into full out war something that was a result oh, yeah. of great teamwork of intelligence agents oh, in the CIA. It. You guessed it. That's all you did, huh? <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, hats off. Like, they were smarter than me on this one since I didn't think it would happen. But, like, when it comes to me, sure, I guess I can get one in a thousand things wrong. And when it comes to them, they can get one in a thousand things right. No, I'm not <laughs> cocky at it's, all. It, have you, it's 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 easy to know that's going to happen when you're directly instigating <laughs> yeah, and sending yeah. the money, and then, you know, right? It's um, not. A... <laughs> but anyways, it's a very good one. <laughs> um, then we move on to talking about a few successful strikes they've had against high-ranking leadership members of Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda, and how they managed to mm-hmm. pull it off without any additional bystanders getting killed, which is always epic. Mm-hmm. For Except me. everybody who was involved. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Except everybody who was involved, <laughs> including the people who killed. Them. And by the way, there are no bodies, surprisingly, and no footage, and nothing. Not- <laughs> That's exactly. Oh, what, Anyways, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Please, what you just said, you you kind of ran right in front of me. It's epic to hear this every time because the only reason these particular strikes that he just mentioned in a fucking podcast are declassified and openly talk about is because they went smoothly. Like all the hundreds yeah. or thousands of other operations that were total failures leading to thousands of deaths are obviously never going to make it to primetime news, let alone on the on the podcast, the greatest uh, piece of media ever invented. Uh, he then manages to obviously squeeze in his first mention of 9-11. I think we should uh, mm-hmm. have like a counter goes bang uh, on this because I'm sure <laughs> it will be a common thing in all the episodes of the show mentioning 9-11. Uh, he says how it felt uh, real good that he contributed to a bit more justice against those uh, who committed uh, that act of violencia. Then he is asked, and this is our second spillage of corporate culture into the intelligence community, quote, why do you think the words dedication and ingenuity speak to who we are as an agency? Uh, literally, I think I feel- Fucking just <laughs> shut up. Fuck. Oh, my God. Like, it's oh, okay. Uh, you know the, you know the yesification mm-hmm. of, of uh, like, uh, sweatshops? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. this is the equivalent, but for, you know, <laughs> war criminals. <laughs> it kind of speaks that they always really deep down inside, like, wanted to be in big business, but they never, I don't, I don't yeah. know, had the brains or the connections or some shit, and they just ended up in uh, big uh, capitalist government, and uh, they want to, like, uh, copy whatever they fucking see on, on TV or when they have those few meetings with, with the, the private sector and how they behave and shit, and they want to pu- pull it into their own organizations so they feel a bit better about themselves. That's how I fucking see it. The corporati- corporate yeah. yassification of... Uh, of the government structures of the good old US of A. But uh, we are blessed then by brilliant points that answer the previous uh, question about why the words education ingenuity speak to who we are as an agency. He says, and all of these are going to be quotes, there is a great sense of mission. The risks of our officers and their families make our motivations very easy. I am reminded of this every time I pass our memorial wall, which is honoring all the 139 fallen colleagues we've lost. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, I, I never like downplaying death, even if it's one of these guys, but 139. Oh, I, I don't like, mind. Like, <laughs> fuck them. Fuck I, all I, of no, them. But, I hope they're... Be- <laughs> Sorry. No, no, but, the, the, I agree completely, but 
you are they are either totally lying or their job is not as dangerous as it sounds i mean isn't the whole the difficulty of doing your duty for your country such a big thing over there because you know you we're supposed to be thankful to these people who risk their lives in the line of duty so i went ahead and did some math the CIA has existed for 75 years, right? Well, 139, which is the number of people, CIA agents that died in the line of duty, divided by 75 is 1.85. Let's say, okay, let's round it up. But two people die per year in the line of duty for the CIA. And this is supposed to be a dangerous fucking job. 56 lodging <laughs> workers die a year. 70 aircraft and flight engineers die a year. 96 roofers die a year. 37 garbage collectors die a year. 966 delivery drivers die a year. 257 farmers die a year. Where is their plaque, motherfucker? Like, thank your pizza <laughs> delivery boy for his service next time. The thin crust yeah, line, no. the thin crust line yeah. flag. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, honestly, they 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 do legitimate service, unlike these fucking yeah, exactly. ghouls, these fucking demons, and they don't even die that I'm much. I'm sure a lot of the deaths are still are yeah. still under wraps. Like I'm sure a yeah. handful of people got bonked in China, and they're not allowed to say anything about it for a while. Oh, I'm so glad. I love when that shit came out. Like it was <laughs> yeah. an official, a semi-official. Statement. It was like, yeah, you know, all the all our agents in China, they're all fucking dead. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Xi Jinping, you fucking absolute <laughs> Chad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have an image in my mind of Xi Jinping coming with a loosened tie and a cigarette, and just like this heavily beaten CIA, fucking you know, all bloodied, and he t- he, t- he he uh, flicks the uh, like you know the the ash off the t- top of the cigarette, and then he puts it out on the forehead of the fucking cunt. <laughs> Fuck him. Jesus fucking Christ. hang him up by <gasps> hang him up by his balls. Fuck and, these. And I'm a weird yeah, guy for pretending to be a special. <laughs> Operations guy in my own apartment. Oh, oh no, my I'm God. the same. I'm the same. Oh, you're you're also still young, know. my child. You are also still young, dude. It's it's it, this is the thing. It's like because these people are so, I don't like using the term, but they're so evil, and yeah. they're evil yeah. for no mm-hmm. other reason other than because they themselves don't buy the bullshit. If you genuinely are part of this organization, you understand that you're not serving the American people. You're not. You're serving capital. You're doing horrible things. You know who's a democratically elected leader or not, and you still have to put in the assassination plans. You have to specifically go ahead and rig elections, oh, for American security interests, even though your big meme is, oh, human rights and democracy and yeah. the you know a leader of the free world, all that nonsense. You know you're full of shit, and you still go ahead of it. So it's like this lack of conscience, or the inverse is you have a conscience, but you still fight against it, which makes you into this pawn of, of the capitalist class that does no good and then ends up fucking dying the death of a dog when you yeah. do get caught because you fucking deserve worse. Fuck you. Mm. But they put you on a wall. They put a name <laughs> on the wall, and then every time somebody oh, passes, yes, they're yes, like, yes. man, <laughs> big respect, man. That's why we do it, man. I wonder how many CIA agent relatives have gone to medical debt. I yeah. wonder. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the that, country yeah. that they're serving. Especially <laughs> but, yeah. from the, what was it, Havana syndrome. But, <laughs> like, I didn't even, like, think of this in my bullet points, but... Uh, CIA agents walk past the wall. They see a bunch of names of guys that did the same thing that they did that died. And mm. that motivates mm. them to continue. And we're like, okay, that makes sense, right? But imagine if I said the same thing about uh, a, a, a drug addict passes next to a wall mm. that has names <laughs> of all dead drug addicts, makes them continue <laughs> taking drugs. Like, mm. quit this awful yeah, yeah. fucking corporation working for the mm. government serving capital. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's... it's. Uh, I do wonder how many of them actually believe it. Like, who that actually believe they're doing a good thing. I can't imagine it's Lord, very many. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. I, I think disagree. there's a few of them probably on the lower end who are like ideologically motivated but the higher you go up the more yeah. you, they the more they realize it's a conscious um like uh, allegiance to capital they know exactly what they're doing and they agree with it and they're yeah. you know yeah I think it's more that you know? even uh, so they either explain it away to themselves their allegiance to capital in many ways like okay without capital we will not be able to build up the greatest country that has ever existed blah 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 some other ones are probably much more honest to themselves and they just uh, mm. like the the higher level position as CIA because it literally allows you to be one of the most influential and powerful people on planet earth uh but that's the 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 I believe it's similar to like as we previously mentioned most like even corporate structures nowadays most hierarchical structures the ones the ones on top actually understand why they're doing it uh or like are so ideologically brainwashed that they keep going with it but the rest the rest like the the 
true body of, for example, in this case, like over 20,000 uh, like CIA analysts and dudes that are crunching numbers and shit are either there for the paycheck or they, they genuinely believe in this shit. Like, oh my God, man, yeah. this is much better than this or that that I could be doing with my life. I'm saving so many people, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, this is just guesswork, I guess. Uh, but none of this is anything as compared to the biggest golden moment of this episode. Once he goes through all the reasons why dedication and ingenuity are so important for the agency, he goes, and I quote, I would add, <laughs> I swear I didn't invent this <laughs> like I wish I did. I would add to the dedication and ingenuity one more statement, and that is that we are a political, a political. Oh, oh, <laughs> fucking suck my dick. <laughs> he suck said, my, "Fuck the you." Fuck, I did not fuck. invent this. I oh, wish I came the up with this thing. I've ever heard. Uh, and yeah. then he continues. I, I, let actually, me just quote. And then you, then you. Uh, okay. We do not prefer political policies or agendas. We just want to deliver uh. the best intelligence and analysis as we can. We give policymakers information that they need to hear, not what they want. To hear, fucking oh, incredible! Wow, the, the the selfless, selfless fucking crusaders for. Uh, I was gonna say for violence. That was a, a <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. For, for freedom. Yeah, but what was I gonna say? Uh, uh, maybe the meme is like they're apolitical, and that's like, oh, we don't value the like yeah. we don't support either Democrat or yeah. Republicans. We support the the capitalist class as a whole within the U.S., which is represented by both parties. I think that's the what he intentionally. I mean, yeah. that's probably a mask off moment in a weird way. Um, the liberal will see it and be like, see, I told you they're, hmm. fucking J.K. <laughs> Rowling told me they're apolitical, okay? <laughs> but if you read a bit through the the subtext, you realize he just means like, oh, yeah, you know, we don't care about fucking uh, Romney care. <laughs> or yeah. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, Trump we care. We just want to kill Trump people, man. Plan? We just want to yeah. go around and kill people. <laughs> yeah, death cancellation? Mm, no. <laughs> the only thing we want to fucking, uh, the only thing we want to cancel is uh, yeah, Afghani children. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that was absolutely incredible to me. Like, He's uh, the the director of the CIA is uh, like a uh, a political center of the political wow, compass. Wow, the, 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 uh, Andy, the director you know. of the CIA is uh, absolutely full of shit. I would have never, <laughs> I would have never guessed. Absolutely not. No, I, I was just expecting <laughs> not th for it to be as cringe, but apparently, uh, yeah, fair the the kids we bullied at school. Uh, they told us they end up being our <laughs> bosses one day. They didn't just end up being our bosses. They ended up being fucking genocidal warlords. But okay. He then, I will quickly wrap up this uh, the first episode. He then goes on to talk about the 75th anniversary of the CIA, what the new challenges are, blah, 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 blah. It's the usual, like, uh, China. We made a whole center here at the CIA focused on China, a rising power and therefore a rising threat. But also, mm. we need to be careful about what he terms declining powers such as Russia, because they can be, and I quote, just as disturbing mm -hmm. as rising ones. Funny how, like, American supremacism in his eyes is mm. apolitical. Apol like, he, yeah, he's yeah, defining exactly. the rising the down as mm. compared to us. I find it very, very rich uh, for an American to refer to Russia as a declining power. As the <laughs> like what are you, what are you guys then? <laughs> well, huh? no. What the fuck yeah. are you guys? Like it's 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 a bit you know like uh, arguably yeah fine you could say so but then the United States equally in terms but whatever fine we're just falling from a higher point so we haven't quite caught up yeah. yet that's the thing yep. yeah, going, yeah, we're, yeah. Gonna and then the, the we're gonna splat all the much more gloriously <laughs> when you hit the ground. <laughs> Oh man, what a glorious day that will be! And, <laughs> and then he can uh, continue, <laughs> and then he can continue and say anything that he wants, but like. This is, to me, the biggest mask-off moment, even bigger than what the Hakim mentioned with the apolitical comment. Also, it's important we work closely with the private sector so that our companies can compete better <laughs> yeah. with those of foreign countries. <laughs> see. Basically, admitting companies uh -huh. can use the CIA okay. to play foreign companies. Only something communists have been saying about bourgeois competition leading to international war since, I don't know, fucking two centuries ago. Literally coming out uh, of his no. mouth on an 18-minute fucking podcast Guys. episode. It's, it's fucking art. Guys, like they please. You seem to forget that the market finds a solution. In this case, it's <laughs> employing literal it's a, it's death squad gun. agents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that, you know, the fucking toothpaste that's produced in Zimbabwe is fucking... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Kill the PR officials. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm imagining the CIA agent dropping in and like garroting a, a floss producer with his own <laughs> floss. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, exactly. He's like these fucking uh, what's uh, uh, you Americans? You have this um, like it's a ship, uh, it's a fish shaped like biscuit thing. Goldfish. They come in small. Goldfish. Yeah, the goldfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know what the the Danish producers <laughs> are competitors. <laughs> Their goldfish are are cheaper and they're of higher quality. They have more G- Cheeto cheese dust. <laughs> and then they, and then the fucking the CEO just calls up the fucking the cabal of CIA agents. <laughs> He's like, we have a mission. <laughs> it's like, let's just say I need the our Danish competitors not to smile back. Oh my! <laughs> oh. I was gonna, I, I was gonna be like, we want them sleeping with the fish. I, I was gonna go <laughs> like old timey gangster with it. <laughs> I was like, oh man, give him more dust than they can handle. And then you just you, you just see a bunch of fucking a bunch of engineers and food scientists, and they're all they're, they're like strung up by their noses. And then there's like a message in Cheeto dust on their. Chest. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, in, 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 in Twenty years, I completely sell out, and I am no longer a Marxist uh, uh, agitator. And I'm sitting in my office, being the advertising director of toothpaste. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like three guys like jump into the window and point like silence pistols at me. And I'm like, finally, you heard about my past as a communist agitator. And they're like, no, you're just too good what? at selling toothpaste, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the end. that's the end of your story. I guess now we find we found out w- which one of us is the one that dies. I, mean, yeah. I think that ma- that means that I'm the one who ends up in prison. What the fuck? That's <laughs> oh, stuff for a lot. Anyways, go on. Uh, and of course, he mentions that uh, terrorism is still a problem and they need to address it. Yeah, yeah. And we finish the episode off with the question: Did you ever they think could just shoot themselves? I mean, yeah. if it, <laughs> terrorism is a big issue, but I, I know what would <laughs> fairly yeah. fairly quickly sort the issue out. Yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> Uh, we fi- and we are the only ones who can say who is a terrorist. Uh, we finish off with uh, a question. Did you ever think you would be the president of the CIA? He obviously answers no, acts all modest. Uh, he talks mm. a bit about his past, about how he was an army brat. Uh, he mm. says, my dad wrote me a letter. No, it's fine. To- I, I, pull back my, I pull back my foreskin one fucking <laughs> one sleeve at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. These people, Jesus Christ. I, I get it. The, the meme is sorry i'm cutting you off i get the meme is like oh he's trying to pretend to be modest and all that kind of stuff but god knows what kind of fucking briefs this dude has gotten yeah. over his life and what things he signed on right like things we don't even know about mm-hmm. right the the what's it called is it 25 years or something the minimum confidentiality bullshit which is by the way very very rich coming from fucking liberals who are like oh yeah um the cia was a horrible institution but in the last 20 years they haven't done anything <laughs> yeah, which by the way con- con- just just by coincidence is also the amount of time that things have to be classified for fuck yeah. all right yeah, sorry, they're really trying to like sound like uh, they are acknowledging what they did in the past. I don't know about you guys' episodes, but throughout mine, he kept uh, saying, you know, we need to learn from our past victories and mistakes. But he intentionally says mistakes uh, and it, failures. It, the mistake is allowing it's, the communists no, no, exactly. to, to win in Cuba. Instead of losses. He never China. uses losses. <laughs> yeah. So he, in his own heart, he thinks losses. But the audience... Uh, can associate the word mistake with a lot of other stuff. And keep in mind, listeners, like uh, 100% of this podcast was extremely scripted. Probably his, like yeah. three PR yeah, secretaries yeah, I noticed that this. too. So especially the director talking, that was scripted as hell. So uh, him using losses, uh, using mistakes instead of losses was definitely a PR stunt. But uh, when again uh, pressed on why exactly he chose to become this, he said, my dad wrote me a letter to help me figure out what I want to do uh, with my life back when I was in my teens. He said, nothing can make you prouder than serving your country with honor. Mm. And that's funny, getting that from your dad, like, son, you can never make me as proud as I make myself for serving a <laughs> colorful cloth and a song <laughs> overseas. And yeah, the the fail son, the fail son is immediately, oh, well, time for me to do the same thing to my future kids. So uh, yeah. that is what we get to learn from a CIA director on a CIA podcast. And if he basically let us know that they work for capital, they are interwoven with the private sector, uh, they either lie about how many of theirs have died or it's actually not that dangerous of a fucking job. Um, (laughs) And all of that on a official show made by their own intelligence agency, then we can only imagine what actually happens behind closed doors. 
I guess that that means that I, I get to uh, move on to my episode, which is oh boy. Uh, yeah, absolutely fucking garbage. Uh, the episode's <laughs> titled CIA, 75 Years and Counting. Um, inshallah, that it will be the last year now. But uh, <laughs> anyways, um, so something that I noticed immediately when, when looking at it is that it's been review bombed on all platforms, which, yeah. by the way, I love. I fucking love the internet. They can they can try to squeeze, squeegee, what's the fucking term, right? Uh, clean off their shitty little reputation, but everybody knows they're full of shit. Mm. And uh, my favorite part is, like, some people are actually like, you know, oh, you're fucking criminals, blah, blah, blah. And there are other people who just say like oh the podcast was boring i didn't i didn't i, I didn't feel the need to keep up with this one star i'm yes. like all right fair enough i'll we'll take it yeah. yeah but the guy that dude that says oh it was boring or it's just kind of bad they didn't they, they do have a point um something that immediately stood out is this liberal like production quality npr cringe mm-hmm. right there's a, a soft speaking white guy and there's this like shitty music that's very cinematic for some reason in the background the vibes are off. <laughs> the vibes were not, were not, you know, right. Very boring. Very, you know, I could see people actually falling asleep to it. Unironically. Yeah. Um, the advice That's how they brainwash is, like, you. That's the idea. They, yeah. Then they implant Ooh. their, uh, join the CIA, join mm. the CIA <laughs> when you're asleep. Exactly. We don't give pensions, but join the CIA. Um, <laughs> That's why I was, I was craving like, joining the CIA so much. Oh, my God. Mm-mm. Oh, shit. Did I oust myself oh, yeah. now? Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I don't know why they can't just get some fucking Twitter Zoomers and then, uh, I don't know, yeah. fear something else. Like get, the, get a CIA Twitch stream. Like the, the PSYOP <laughs> e-girls, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Oh, fuck. Have you seen the when the military, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the American military, the American army. Uh, had a, uh, a Twitch stream thing that was running, and uh-huh. people just kept spamming like, "Oh, war crimes, eighty percent. War crimes, eighty <laughs> percent." <Like, laughs> oh my god, I love it. But yeah, uh, I listened to. By the way, the, the episodes are short; they're like twenty minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh-huh. I listened to it at two times speed, and I still wanted to fucking kill myself. It felt like hours. <laughs> it's incredibly boring. Anyways, um, the first thing they start off is they they go through the introduction that uh, Yugopnik mentioned. Oh, the truth shall set you free. Which, by the way, gave me real Arbeit Nazi vibes. Yeah, uh, like vibes. Yeah, my honestly, friend. it's very strange that they use this. Right, keep it in Latin at least, so then I, you know, it kind of is goes with your but, bullshit theme. But but even when yeah, they, whatever. but when they log off, it's even better. They say, "We will be seeing you." Like what? Uh, the oh, fuck? Wow, mask what off, fucking mask off. That's a fucking yeah. threat, baby. They know what they're doing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They're full of shit. That's like, yeah, whoever, whichever agent is fucking, you know, I, I await my my ball licking session. All right. <laughs> 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 oh man. Anyways, the uh, they're bullshit. Yeah, again, you have to mention duty, ingenuity, blah blah. Let's take a glimpse into the world of the CIA yeah, with yeah. all the cinematic bullshit. And I'm just. I'm, like they they hired a profession like several professionals to put the shit together and it still comes off so incredibly disingenuous they have this vibe where they're pretending to be um like off the cuff oh none of this is you know pre-planned but it's so clearly scripted down to every word right but uh yeah i, I, I don't know what to say they, they should get better actors i guess you'd yeah. assume that these people would be better actors but uh anyways th- my episode begins with uh i was looking forward to it because it was like 75 years and counters i was thinking that they're gonna recall like oh great things that they've done to their history no they're <laughs> yeah. just talking about their shitty fucking celebration party that they're doing which i couldn't care less about it's like a christmas party in an office uh. if me, that's the way they talk about it they continue anyways, literally like a fucking just company over in oregon like it's it's yeah, not even yeah, cool yeah. to be in the CIA anymore like evil and cool but you know the Gestapo very evil but yeah you get the suit you know like at least I'm evil uh, but I work for the CIA yeah, look at me I got glasses and a black suit now they do office parties yeah. what with fucking pizza and shit yeah. <laughs> the one thing you got out of do it do you think do you think the CIA also just does pizza parties instead of paying for overtime yeah, probably oh, yeah. <laughs> Pro- they, probably <laughs> they prank each other with different experimental uh, pathogens oh, like God. pizza <laughs> they, oh, Jesus, uh, w- yeah. when they blow the shit out of your fucking uh, wedding they the, to the survivors they send like some dominoes <laughs> afterwards Oh my god. Anyways, um, so they begin the episode by praising William J. Donovan, who was the founder of the CIA, or the f- f- founding father of the CIA. He founded the OSS and other bullshit. Yeah. Um, but basically the precursor to the CIA, and he was instrumental in the formation of the CIA. Um, and he has arguably the most propaganda, polished, like positive Wikipedia page I've ever seen. Like more than American presidents, more than... There is not a single negative word about this guy in like a huge... Wikipedia article, which is, is like telling in and of itself. Yeah. Um, especially when they uh, uh, hide very like buried within the uh, within the article, they hide the fact that this guy took a look at the Gestapo and was like, "I want to make that, but for the U.S." <laughs> yeah. This is actually he was like, "I want to make an American Gestapo," and the the CIA idea was based on 
basically an American Gestapo, which um, yeah, if you if that's all you need, to, that is basically all you need to know, really. Yeah. Anyway, so this uh, douche basically traveled all around the world, befriending every fascist dictator, helping them set up death squads to fight communism, all that nonsense. Yeah. Uh, and then he became demented into his old age because you know he's hated uh, by uh, by everything divine. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and I quote, I quote, he imagined he saw he was in a hospital. By the way, this is he's demented. He's about to fucking go out. Right, the lights are gonna go out, and then he's gonna wake up next to Satan, fucking being. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sodomized right uh, anyways <laughs> and he and i quote he imagined he saw the red army coming over the 59th street bridge into manhattan and in one memorable last mission fled the hospital wandering down the street in his pajamas the fucking dweeb i like how they try to make this fu- like yeah. ooh, uh, heroic my guy you would have been you would have been mushed under some fucking t-57 or something <laughs> and, and and you would deserve it but anyways yeah just imagine this old fucking demented white guy from the fucking the red are coming <laughs> with his fucking balls hanging out of his his, his, his his boxers anyways they go on to talk about oh, oh you know our we're, we're made uh, like our purpose is uh to to uh, consider national security challenges uh that were like it was made to address national security challenges which is a very interesting way of framing the the purposes of the cia and what they want to get done and that's kind of uh, uh pulls back to the point that you was making with um just how uh, sanitized and and like PR the language is, mm. right? Um, very strong uh, like collateral uh, damage type of uh, language. National security challenges. Um, they discuss uh, like, oh, uh, we had several institutions gathering intelligence, but they were kind of garbage. They didn't talk to each other, so we want to centralize um, the uh, mm. the, the uh, information gathering. Democracy uh, centralizing uh, as many aspects mm. of government to. One organization, very, very, <laughs> exactly very democratic. Right. Uh-huh. And, and I love how they, 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 you know, they speak very quickly and certain parts they say even more quickly just so like to kind of like skirt past it almost. And like, oh, the OSS, which was the precursor to the CIA, CIA it conducted paramilitary operations. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder what that could possibly mean. What, what paramilitary operations were, perhaps, perchance, perchance. But yeah, and uh, they kind of tried to distance themselves from that history by claiming like, oh, the OSS was more that, but the CIA is about like yeah. collecting information. And it's a very like, oh, well, we just com- we just collect information, guys. Oh we're, we're small, mean, and harmless. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> it's such fucking... Like, all right. Uh, yeah, and, and they, uh, they mention, oh, we're directing covert action. That's the purpose of the CIA, which, by the way, is basically conducting paramilitary operations. You're yeah. saying the same thing, right? Uh, the George but, Carlin uh, well, stand okay. up, literally. All, the, yeah, all yeah, of basically. CIA. That's literally. what I was thinking yeah. of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Exactly right. Yeah, the George Carlin bit. Um, shell shock and the fucking. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, then he goes on. It, 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 they go on to introduce two guests that I'm not going to bother to note down, but they're apparently responsible for this stupid, like, 75th anniversary celebration party, whatever. And they are the driest whites you can imagine. <laughs> I don't usually say this kind of stuff, but it's genuinely, it is the driest fucking Karen Supreme, only like black pepper on the chicken breast. Ooh, paprika is too spicy. These type of people, right? <laughs> you can hear it in the fucking voice. But anyways, yeah, I, the, the, they talk. And at this point, I honestly, I, I started dozing off and I had to pull back, like go back 30 seconds every couple of minutes just to make sure I didn't miss something that they said that may have been important. But yeah, they do the usual, the pathetic attempt. They try to humanize one of the worst organizations to ever exist. Um, they really try to push this perspective of, oh, we're just a regular workplace. Like we have conversations by the water cooler, you know, like this yeah. kind of nonsense which by the way yeah i guess but i think like concentration camp workers probably also had that yeah, yeah right yeah. like the, the guards so it doesn't the, the, just because you know you're fairly laid back in the administrative side doesn't change the fact that you're a horrible institution no, anyways, when they go to um, their high school gatherings and some guy is a fucking you know finance bro with like some three fucking yachts and you get like fucking yeah. 60k a year and you have to kill like four children and you fucking feel awful about your <laughs> yeah. career choice as compared to him you gotta try to convince yourself that you also kind of work in a corporation just like him it's just you know a government corporation so it's this uh, I'm repeating the same point I said about the previous episode but there we go this is like t- point number 10 in which they're like actually yeah. we're just like any other firm and it's yes it's also mm. marketing outwards marketing but it's inwards marketing and potentially even recruitment marketing for people to say you know we're not that fucking weird come it's absolutely a mm-hmm. great little fucking environment over here we go bowling after work you know uh. yeah yeah exactly right that's the vibe that they try to push and it's fucking pathetic but here's the here's the bit that made me want to like i paused and i i, I was physically angry at this point um because there's this one woman one of the karens and she's speaking and she's like oh um uh we used to say that the cia is pale male and Yale, 
Oh, but God. now we emphasize diversity ah, and inclusivity. Ah, ah, <laughs> and even then, yeah, by the way, by the way, fucking the, you know, you know, uh, Snake in Metal Gear 1 when he's being uh, tortured and he's like, <laughs> that fucking, that's basically what I fucking felt. <laughs> Just put in, put in the fucking audio of, of you know, when you have to tap circle uh, oh, yeah. a million times and he's like, oh, I'll know if you use the rumble. The <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, basically, it's that. It's the most fucking pain. I remember I physically paused and I was like, ah, fuck. <laughs> And, and the reason I the reason I hate it as well is because they specifically emphasize that oh diversity and inclusivity is necessary for them to continue to do their job so it's not even for diversity and inclusivity's sake it's because now whenever they try to infiltrate somewhere we like the fucking, fucking you know if, if they, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly that's what they say it's like we need fucking we need some fucking blacks to get we used to have whites all over Africa so it was relatively yeah. fucking easy yeah. but we failed all their jobs so now there's not as fucking oh many my god. oh my god and now the chinese so uh, are like we've, a got a, we've got a few openings in china we need one of those uh, asian looking fellows <laughs> yeah. we have a for no, no particular too. reason <laughs> Oh my god! They, they hire him Genuinely. and they're like, "Your next objective is in mainland China." Someone. And he's like, "Sir, I'm Filipino. I don't speak Chinese." <laughs> yeah, yeah, same fucking thing. Get the fuck in there. Yeah. <laughs> they, they bring in Samoa and they're like, "Yeah, they're tired. They, you guys, you pass." <laughs> oh my god! You know that hey, joke? Well, also, I have to say a joke. You know that joke? Uh, they, uh, the United States during the Cold War trains uh, a infiltrator uh, towards the Soviet Union for over. 10 years, this man has been uh, raised in a Russian family, has been uh, taught Russian from birth, uh, had a Russian grandma that uh, fed him only Russian food, went to a special school they only designed for him where it was only from people from that immigrated from the Soviet Republic. So he cannot interact with anybody uh, from the United States. His handlers all spoke uh, fluent Russian when he was getting training and ideological training for the United United States, etc., etc., and after like 20 years of training, he gets finally uh, dropped with an airship in Siberia. It's super fucking cold everywhere. He's stretching through the snow. He uh, and he sees a little house. He knocks on the door. A little babushka opens. She's super nice. She's like, "Oh my God, my son, what are you doing outside? Mm. Please come inside." He sits. Uh, he looks around. He asks her for some vodka. Asks her for some very local food. She gives it to him. They start having conversations. He asks her about uh, the grandma's um, grandchildren. He talks a bit about the political situation in the country, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then the grandma asks him, oh, my, my, my son, after they talk for like two hours, where are you actually from? And he's like, ah, oh, from, mm-hmm. the, from the Soviet Union. She's like, my mm. son, you're not from the Soviet Union. Just tell me where you're from. He looks at her and he's mm. like, Okay, grandma, like I trained for this shit for 20 fucking years. How did you guess I am not from the fucking Soviet Union? She's like, my son, not many black people in Siberia. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of build up for a fucking stupid joke. I, I knew it was coming. Fuck oh, oh okay. my God. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for serenading us. Yeah, but sorry. I, to, to build up on, on that point. No, no, thank you very much. To build up on that point. Um, they re-emphasize their shitty little slogan that they picked for the 75th anniversary. And the slogan is, look, what virgin shit is this? Duty, commitment, mission. And I specifically wrote in my notes, the virgin duty, commitment, vis- uh, mission versus the Chad, Vernos Partie, Vernos Rodnia, which means loyalty to the party, loyalty to the motherland, which is the KGB <laughs> slogan, which fucking slaps so comparatively. Honest. So, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly right. They're not, they, it's, you know, it's literally loyalty to the party and loyalty to the motherland. There we go. Fuck, but these people are like, ooh, duty, commitment, mission, inclusivity. We're LGBT plus friendly. Uh, <laughs> fucking, oh my Unless God. Unless you're in a different country, people. then we'll, you know, oh, yeah, fuck you. chemically castrate uh, you, throw you out a window, uh, yeah. you know. No, my, like these people are even this fucking shit at home. Fuck them. They don't yeah. believe any of this nonsense. They just do what, what the PR people tell them that they need to get done. That's why they did the, uh, you can do your best, mija. Fucking oh, yeah. uh, Latina. Uh, Nobody CIA liked that, that commercial. They, yeah. Everybody yeah. hated it. They alienated yeah. every single person with That's that. They it made was this a work of art. You know something? You know something? I actually think that ad was the greatest, uh, what's it called, argument against planning. 
because they had so many experts take a look at that, and it's still fucking bombed. <laughs> yeah. I'm, jo- I'm, I'm joking, obviously. There's no parallel to be drawn. It's just for yeah. me. But yeah, it, it is general, like how badly they fucked up. They couldn't have shown this just to a couple of people before, yeah. just to be like, eh, you know, this is a bit kind of weird. Um, it, it's kind of yeah. difficult when the CIA shows you something, and for you to say, nah, this sucks. <laughs> you know, like the Gestapo. <laughs> like, Do you like this uh, SS symbol, boy? You're like, oh, yes, yes, sir. It's very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So the, one of the again, one of the aforementioned Karens, she's talking and she's like, "Oh yeah, like tee, we have so many fucked up secrets that we keep, but the public will be involved oh, in the celebration this time. So uh, let's see how good of a job we keep in making sure they don't come out. By the way, we do a fairly good job to make sure those horrible secrets don't come out, don't you think?" <laughs> I'm God. like, "You like you're talking about some guy that's underneath like several levels underground that's being fucking tortured. God knows how, yeah. right?" <laughs> and she, this woman gets to go and see her fucking grandkids on the weekends. Jesus. Oh, All right. Geez. Anyways, um. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fucking Tihi, right? Um, <laughs> they, and I mentioned this earlier, it's so plainly obvious that they use so much PR and yeah. so many fucking, you know, and she emphasizes again, the uh, like, uh, repeatedly, oh, we have all these experts that we use everywhere online on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. Um, of course, no mention of, you know, Reddit, which, by the way, they're, they've been proven to have a fucking yeah. a massive pre- presence on. And they also, she, she mentioned, by the way, she just let it slip. She was like, oh, uh, the CIA also pushes positive perspectives through the press, which, yeah. by the way, you know, regular capitalist free press hours, of course, you know, mm-hmm. the completely normal that uh, a shadowy, uh, like, intelligence organization that is not beholden to the public. And that is apolitical. And public opinion. It is apolitical, <laughs> yeah, remember? No, no, of, course, of course, of course, guys. Uh, they spin the recruitment also of all, basically every single facet of life, uh, in the CIA and the OSS, as it was, oh, some good and interesting choice. Oh, how quirky of us um, to, to to decide to, you know, bring anybody from fucking, like, uh, Supreme Court judges to, to, to actors to whoever the fuck, right, um, uh, into, into the fold of intelligence work. Um, no commentary how messed up it is. They're just like, oh, look how quirky we are. It was so so interesting that we did that. Uh, by the way, throughout that, they also shout out their fucking YouTube channel. <laughs> it's like, oh, subscribe, ring the bell. <laughs> Assassinate that bell. like button. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck, Further yeah, is my much. theory that yeah. everybody in every industry that exists on planet Earth would like to be a YouTuber. It is the <laughs> yeah, most pretty, sought pretty after much. fucking job ever. Hitler would have way, would have been a sorry. great YouTuber. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was gonna say I would I, I would I want to actually go and look up their fucking CIA like YouTube channel and whatnot, but I know it's gonna have like you know they're gonna have like eight hundred views on the shitty videos or something, mm-hmm. or it's gonna, like yeah, I'm not I don't care. Um, but yeah, I've noticed also throughout my entire episode they use a lot of outdated like fifties American patriotic slogan bullshit. Yeah. Uh, Things that you don't really see anymore, I would think, in the U.S. A lot of like, oh, we're officers serving the nation. We're safeguarding the nation. The importance of the mission. Like this, like Metal Gear terminology, yeah. right? To stay one step ahead of our adversaries. You know, this fucking Blech. nonsense. Uh, yeah, exactly. It leaves a bad taste in the mouth. It tastes like fucking arsenic. Uh, which, by the way, I'm sure they're very fond of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, they, they, they meant, to, oh, like, we need to, the 75th anniversary is to celebrate us, to look at our achievements, to look at our heroes and what we've done in the past, because, you know, it's, it's such a, oh boy, what a, what a positive thing. They, the, the same thing that they mentioned with Yugopnik, in Yugopnik's episode, they mentioned in mine, they're like, oh, the world is changing, so we need to increase our partnership with industry, academia, and increase our online presence, which, again, is just a t- completely normal thing for intelligence, you know, to, to do, um, and a normal thing for them to, 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 uh, what's it called, admit, and, uh, yeah, but, I don't know what to tell you. They specifically, by the way, they say they, they they mention branding efforts, which makes me fucking laugh thinking about fucking CIA merch, <laughs> which I, which probably exists. It probably does One exist. Million, billion no, they probably have a merch crazy. store. We should yeah. make some knockoff CIA merch. Oh, oh people my would God, buy yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, fucking Ch- Chattanooga fucking yeah. um, intelligence agency. But yeah, and, and by the way, they have this fucking cringe trivia at the end, uh, a, tri- a trivia round at the end, oh, which is yeah. oh, to- it's totally not pre-planned, guys. Um, and it's not, it's not like oh, how many democratic, uh, democratically elected leaders have we assassinated? <laughs> uh, they're all ooh, fucking ooh, ooh, quirky questions about yeah, exactly ooh, ooh questions about oh, what year was the building uh, built and other fucking bullshit uh. like this? Um, completely thoroughly sanitized from the evil that they do every day. And by the way. The answer to the trivia question of Yugopnik's uh, episode, they they asked like, oh, um, some agent built some fucking shark repellent spray from explosives or something. <laughs> do you know who the fucking? Do you know who the fuck it was? Julia Child, the fucking cooking yeah, lady. Yeah. She was she was 
Not only was she an officer of the uh, of the American state of the OSS at the time, okay? Uh, not only did she also she played a fucking role in trying to prevent the Chinese Revolution, the Communist Revolution of China. She played a direct effort in trying to prevent the fucking cooking lady, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking grandma. Oh, you know, use uh. crest for the fucking that that woman. Fuck these ghouls. But oh. yeah, um, and anyway, the, the end of my, the, the last note I left is TLDR died of major cringe, uh, which uh, is, probably, is probably a method of assassination. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh my God. CIA. That is, oh my God. It was a weapon. It was a trap this entire time to kill yeah. anti-capitalist <laughs> and anti-imperialist showmakers. Mm. Oh Lord. Oh no. Yeah, they've I got some dying. new carrier wave on the, that they've baked into their audio file that's just going to mm-hmm. zap our brains. We're all doomed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Sorry, JT. Go, you please, you go on. <laughs> okay. Well, let's wrap this up. I had episode three, uh, which is talking about how to join the CIA. It's basically a big recruitment ad. Um, and I cannot stress enough, like the first two episodes, that this was. 100% scripted, like entirely from beginning to end, mm. including the guest, including the fake banter at the end. This was entirely scripted, incredibly cringe, incredibly transparent. Um, but one thing that came to mind when I was listening to this, because it was more of, you know, just the corporate speak, the, oh, you know, we have to work on our agility, we're the tip of the spear, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all that bullshit stuff where they're, you know, they're saying they're a public thing, a public organization, but they have to, uh, they have to be competitive with the private the private sector and oh we love the private sector I just operate a little bit differently here <laughs> they keep talking about it There's, they they want to be the <laughs> private sector so fucking much okay sorry please continue. yeah it is it is very interesting um what, imagine a privatized CIA oh it's coming We're, yeah, it's that's coming what boys they want. exactly <laughs> they're pitching basically they're pitching yeah it's a pitch anyway what what came to mind cuz you guys both said it this this was incredibly dull and for me, it's important to recognize that evil, we're going to use that word again because I think mm. they, it does merit it. Evil is not always flashy. It is sometimes completely dull like this. Mm. What they're doing with this podcast is bad. It's evil. It's wrong. That You're trying to, to whitewash an aberrant mm. history of some of the worst crimes ever committed by humanity and trying to get new people, new blood, to join this organization by selling them, oh, you know, we have pizza parties. Oh, well, we're, we're practicing diversity. You know, we, we want mm-hmm. everybody to be able to drone strike children. It's, <laughs> it's gross, and it is, it is boring, but, you know, beneath that surface, of, that very gray surface is, is just a, a, an evil that is difficult to comprehend at this point. Like, once you start looking into what the CIA has done, you're like, man, okay, yeah, we are the bad guys. We are absolutely the bad guys. Absolutely. But the way that the guest um, tried to promote the CIA is, um, he said, oh, you know, it's we don't employ Jason Bourne. It's not all, you know, uh, uh, secret agent stuff. You know, we have analysts. We have pencil pushers. We have people who go get they the They did the same in my episode. Like, what, three mm, episodes, yeah. you're repeating the same points. What the fuck? Mm, exactly. And like, it's only half an hour. The, yeah, my episode is only half an hour. It's like, how can you mm. be struggling for content that badly yeah. with 75 <laughs> yeah, years CIA. of history? Probably yeah. like a the team of 20 people. All the shit has been declassified. Yeah. 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 It's all the shit has been declassified. Just fucking open up. No wonder that liberal yeah. thing is like, I, I, I didn't, you know what? I didn't mind it. No, it was the, uh, I didn't care for this, this podcast. It was boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One star. <laughs> <laughs> but what he did say is it's for people looking for adventure, for, for people oh, who want to wow. promote the security of the <laughs> why, United why States. Go That's how I was <laughs> why go drive down some fucking, ooh, why not go to, why go to Costa Rica? You know what? Go and kill fucking children. <laughs> That's yeah. what, oh my God. It's just, and the whole, the whole security of the United States angle, it's like, you're not really, the only way you're promoting security is by destroying the security of your fellow human beings elsewhere in the world like you're not it's not defensive we always claim that these things are defensive like we're prof- oh you know it's a it's an operation where we are protecting our citizens from etc some, for some you know vague threat but that's not what it is we are the threat we are the ones going over and and that should be defended against but, you know, it's just a, the rhetorical flourish that we've used for years now where it's not the Department of War, it's the Department of Defense. Same thing with the CIA. They use the, the exact same rhetoric. But one, <laughs> one thing, this, this might be my favorite part from the episode, mm. is this quote. We don't operate here domestically. All the work we do is overseas. 
<laughs> okay. Incredible. So I'm sure everybody <laughs> listening to this podcast, surely MK Ultra is the first thing that comes to mind. Like that's the most obvious mm, one. Yeah. Like they do operate here. They do operate domestically. Yes, the FBI does most of that stuff. But if, if you think the CIA is not doing at least some psyops here in the United States, like they've always done, I don't know what to tell you. I've got a bridge to sell you. Yeah. That's, <laughs> no, no, it's not even that. It's it's the thing is that it's also it's more benign than people think. It's not just yeah. like oh, you know, they're psychedelic infusing. No, oh, the fluoride. They, just, they own water. bookstores no. and stuff. That's what it, it's like. Yeah, yeah. Little stuff. Or they have like Twitter bots. They shit like this, right? It's fucking yeah. yeah, yeah. It's little things on, to maintain right. the status quo to just kind of keep the river flowing the way they want it to flow. They're not like massively shaping public opinion. They're just prodding in little in little places. It's very innocuous. Um, but I made a video on all of this where. <laughs> which uh, it's a long story I've, I've told it many times before um so i won't do it again here but the video is called the cia is a terrorist organization i would strongly encourage you to go watch it if you can if you have to sign in and go through a bunch of like hoops to watch it um but i think it's a pretty decent video about the crimes of the cia but moving on uh <laughs> another fun quote was some people don't apply to work for the cia because they feel they're not good enough okay that is not the problem. It's, <laughs> the skill set doesn't matter. It's quite the contrary, frankly. You are too good for the CIA. Yeah, Every yeah. single person <laughs> who works for yeah. the CIA is a bad person. Period. It doesn't matter if you're a big important spy or you're like a scrawny little mm -hmm. dude getting coffee for the boss. You are, you're perfectly good. You know, you're perfectly capable of doing CIA work. You just, you don't need to do it. You don't need to feel compelled to go and cause this chaos and death and destruction and and just unrest everywhere in the world it's that's why people don't apply you know cia recruiter guy it's not that they're you know they're afraid they don't have the qualifications it's because they have a conscience which is something that these people clearly lack or they have suppressed very effectively in which case they are truly lost in my opinion truly beyond saving so in, in summary uh, a message to the the host of this show Fuck you, Walter. Fuck you, D. Fuck you, nuts. <laughs> D's nuts. D's yeah, nuts. D's nuts. Yeah. You will all be remembered as monsters and criminals. Your children yeah. and grandchildren will be ashamed of you. Whoa. You've blackened a branch of your family tree, and you will be hated until you are finally forgotten. The CIA <laughs> deserves to be destroyed. That's all. That's that's the summary of, of my episode. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> Get <Gubnick is> tickled. <laughs> oh my god, I'm hard, baby. <laughs> oh. I mean, hey, uh, D and Walter, if you guys want to come on the show and, and talk about some of your classified <laughs> oh work. God. Yes, please, please, please. Uh, yes, we will. There is a way for you to be forgiven. Yeah. We yeah. take yeah. it back. Uh, by hey, but yeah, it needs to be an uh, active process. You yeah. know? We are here to take your confession. Just. Drop us a line. We've got an email address. <laughs> uh, shoot us an email. <laughs> We'd love to hear you from you. If you want to come on the podcast. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. It's oh, not going to be scripted. We're going to actually ask you questions, and you're yeah. actually going to have to answer. But we would love yeah, to, yeah. To, to hear you defend yourself. So oh get it, focus group. Listen, listen, to listen, to, listen to this podcast in your, <laughs> in your next party, and uh, we'll see you soon. And with all that said... Uh, thank you to everybody who bothered to listen to this this <laughs> absolute shit fest. Um, we would love to thank our lovely patrons who we wouldn't be able to do this without. Okay, unlike this, this our CIA, CIA uh, podcast buddies who are funded by the <laughs> <laughs> by your tax dollars. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for the support. We couldn't do it without you. This has been the D program. I'm Hakim. I'm JT. And I'm Ugopnik. And remember, the D program is an apolitical podcast and organization. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!